there's five of these movies. You mean to freaking tell me there's now five of these freaking movies? Everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here to review Ice Age Collision shit. I, I mean, uh, course. Yeah, Ice Age Collision course. So, Ice Age Collision course is the fifth installment in the Ice Age franchise. Wow. The film has the voice talent of Ray Romano, Dennis Leary, John Leguizamo, Queen Latifah, Josh Peck, Sean William Scott, Kiki Palmer, Adam Devine, Simon Pegg, Wanda Sykes, Nick Offerman. You have a whole lot of talented people here. So Ice Age 5 is about when Mandy and Ellie, they have to get to that tough part in parenthood where they have to let go of their daughter Peaches because Peaches now has a boyfriend named Julian voiced by Adam Devine. And of course, Mandy, I would say specifically, doesn't like it. Then one day, you know, everyone is celebrating the anniversary of Manny and Ellie. And then out of nowhere, this meteor hits straight to Earth, you know, thanks to, no surprise, Scrap. When this meteor comes, the team reunite with Buck from Dawn of the Dinosaurs. So now it's up to Buck and the others to team up together because they have to stop some kind of prophecy with this meteor. Now, obviously, you guys can probably tell how I feel about this film by now, so I don't even have to say it. I'm just going to give you my history with the Ice Age movies. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I actually really enjoy the first movie, the second movie, the third movie. I actually really enjoy all three of those movies. If this freaking, what's now called a franchise, just stayed as a trilogy, the Ice Age trilogy could have been one really enjoyable, really entertaining, solid, animated trilogy, if it stayed that way. But no, of course, Blue Skies feels the need to make more of these films. Now, Continental Drift, yeah, it's not good, but I didn't hate it as much as everyone else. Uh, that movie is two out of four stars. I thought it was just mediocre. I thought it was okay. I uh, didn't hate it, but, you know, definitely once it got to Continental Drift, that's when I was like, okay, you could go ahead and just stop from here before this franchise gets any worse. And so now we get to Ice Age Collision Course. And what I think of this movie... This movie sucks. Ice Age Collision Course is the true downfall in this franchise. Why didn't they just stop with Continental Drift? It could just stop there. Because at least at that point, in my opinion, it wasn't bad. But now we've reached the point where I have now officially seen a dreadful, unwatchable Ice Age movie. As someone that loves the animated genre, this was just soul crushing to watch you guys. This really just hurt my heart. And this is kind of from Blue Sky Studios, a studio I actually like more than most people. I think both the real movies are really good. I loved Robots, Peanuts movie, my favorite animated movie of last year. How do they go from an amazing animated movie that just came out last year to now one of the worst animated movies I've seen in a while this year. Just how? How, Blue Skies? Why do you need to feel so greedy? I get it. The Ice Age franchise, financially up until this movie, of course, has been a success. I get that they're struggling, you know, and when I look at studios and I look how much their franchises make, you know, I can have a little sympathy towards that and I can understand that because I know Blue Sky Studios is honestly in a very rough patch and I feel sorry for Blue Skies, but I know they can do better. Don't milk your franchise, Blue Skies, because that's just going to make your situation even worse. 
But of course, before I get into details why I really, oh my god, hated Collision Course so much, there are a few positives I have for Collision Course. Okay, so the first positive Collision Course has, in my opinion, is the animation. The animation I actually think looks really good. Just like with all the other Ice Age movies, that's, that's definitely something I'm going to say. Every single Ice Age movie has really good animation, and Collision Course is no different. There are, honestly, a lot of nice animated shots. The animation looks clean. There's some nice colors to the animation. When it comes to the voice talents, I thought Ray Romano, Dennis Leary, John Leguizamo, and Simon Pegg, all of them did a really good job voicing their characters. I felt like they were actually putting in effort into their characters. I actually felt like when they were voicing these characters, they were actually having a lot of fun. Now, something I actually was looking forward to seeing when it comes to this film is the return of Buck because Buck was just an awesome character and Don the Dinosaurs. The first scene involving Buck in this film was a lot of fun. When you see Buck for the first time in this movie, I was actually having fun. I was actually finding myself smiling. And it even includes this one minute scene where Buck is singing. Even though it's just a one minute long sequence of him just singing and going crazy and wacky and all that, it was fun and it put a big old smile on my face. So the first scene involving Buck in this film was a lot of fun. I was actually smiling. And I laughed once or twice. And that's where the positives stop. <sighs> now, like I said, Ray Romano, Dennis Leary, John Leguizamo, Simon Pegg, they did a really good job voice acting. The rest of the voice actors either felt like they were trying way too hard, or they were just shoehorning in their performance. Like they were not shoehorning it in, they were phoning it in. There you go. They were just phoning in their voice performance just to get that easy paycheck from Josh Peck, which Josh Peck, I love you, man, but come on, you can do better than this. Sean William Scott, Queen Latifah, Kiki Palmer, Adam Devine, who I'm starting to like more, you know, especially like with Mike and Dave Need Way and Dates, who was just playing great in that film. Here in this film, I felt like Adam Devine was just trying way too hard, in my opinion. To Jesse Tyler Ferguson from My Modern Family, 2016 is apparently the year where Modern Family stars are doing voices from Ty Burrell and Hill Neal in Finding Dory to Eric Stone Street and The Secret Life of Pets. And now we have Jesse Tyler Ferguson in Ice Age Collision Course and Boy oh boy, Wanda Sykes, I felt like she was just phoning it in too. Even Queen Latifah, I felt like she was just phoning it in. So I thought everyone either tried too hard or they were just phoning it in and it was just sad, honestly. It really, really was sad. Nick Offerman as well, I felt like he was just phoning it in his performance, which is a shame because I really like Nick Offerman. The antagonist in Ice Age Collision Course, really did not have to be in this film. You know, and these antagonists, you know, one of them is Nick Offerman, who you could say is the leader of the three, but I didn't see the point of them being in this film. The humor in this film was, whew, was god awful. I didn't think that it was executed very well. You want to talk about humor that falls so far freaking flat because like I said I only laughed maybe once or twice you guys and when you only laugh at one percent one per freaking cent of the humor that is not good crash and Eddie report for duty <laughs> duty yeah we haven't heard humor like that before wow that was so amazing that was just so funny right there not to mention there are some seriously annoying characters in this film that really drove me nuts first of all crash and eddie shut up seriously shut up crash and eddie i used to like you guys and now you've just become these annoying characters you know who's another character i used to like sid 
I used to really like Sid. Now he's gotten to the point where I just want to punch this guy in the freaking face. Granny really annoyed the shit out of me. And then there's also the llama, voiced by Jesse Tyler Ferguson. And once this movie got to that scene where we see the llama for the first time, my jaw actually dropped because I was in absolute horror. I was actually horrified because I couldn't believe that this film managed to get worse. I'm not kidding you. Each scene, when you don't think the film could get any worse, the next scene after that scene manages to get worse and worse and worse and worse and freaking worse. And then of course, Julian voiced by Adam Devine. Now look, I'm not gonna say anything bad at Adam Devine because I'm not gonna be that kind of person. I think Adam Devine, honestly, I, he's becoming more likable. He's actually been growing on me. I used to not like him, but he's becoming Melissa McCarthy, where I'm actually starting to grow on the guy, especially what I said with Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates not too long ago. He was great in that film, but oh my goodness, his character. It's not him. It's his character that annoyed me so much. The way he's just all like, bro, 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 all right, man, bro, bro, bro. Oh my God. <sighs> Sid's romance plot, oh my goodness. Completely, absolutely shoehorned. And Sid, you know, I feel like they only gave him this plot because this movie has the storyline where everyone has somebody except for him. And I find it funny that Sid is actually very underused. Yeah, Sid really doesn't have a whole lot of screen time. So I felt like in order for Sid to have more screen time around, I believe, the second half of the movie, they all of a sudden decide to just shoehorn in this romance plot somehow. And I couldn't believe this. Somehow, this movie ruined Buck. And like I said earlier, I was looking forward to seeing Bucks' return. Because Continental Drift, you only saw him for like three to four seconds. So it's really cool to see him back. And like I said in my positives, the first scene with Buck in this movie was really good. It was really fun and I was smiling. After Buck's first scene in this film, yeah, the Buck I knew from Don the Dinosaurs isn't in this film. First of all, he felt way too out of character. He just felt way too out of the ordinary. And I know he was wacky, but just something about him in this film just didn't feel right. Not to mention that he feels really over-exaggerated. In this film, it felt like all of that charm and wit he had in Down the Dinosaurs is absolutely gone, and that really makes me sad, because I love Buck, and I loved him for that one scene in this film, but that one scene's the only time I got Di Dawn of the Dinosaurs Buck, not Collision Course Buck. The film has its heartwarming moments. And you guys know me when it comes to heartwarming moments. I can buy into that stuff easily for the most part. Not for this film. Just the heart had no meaning into this film. And of course, you do know where the film is going. The film is extremely predictable. The film is very cliche. And like I always say a lot of times in my movie reviews, predictability and cliches don't really bother me unless I find myself engaged. But because I found myself really bored and I found myself in absolute pain watching Ice Age Collision Course, I can't excuse the whole, it's predictable, it's cliche, and it's riddled with all of them. It is so riddled with it, it's not even funny. Not to mention the whole storyline with the meteor and the prophecy behind the meteor. Oh, oh. Oh my, my head hurts. Oh, God, <laughs> I was so stupid. What were the writers thinking? Like seriously, were they just running out of that many ideas to come up with at least a good storyline? Not to mention that this movie has these gags that are relevant to today's society. But the other Ice Age movies didn't have that. So why did this film feel the need to have the, oh, hashtag this, hashtag that? Like, what? You're in the prehistoric times. Not the times where everyone's on their cell phones or listening to music. 
on their freaking computers or whatever we have in today's world. It just didn't make sense. The humor did not make sense. The storyline did not make sense. And then there is this thing where you see all of these animals be young, like the ones that are old. They're young with this meteor and eh. uh, my, my brain hurts. I, f I seriously felt like my brain was melting when I was watching this movie because it was just that dumb. It was so dumb. Uh, oh man. And then the last problem Ice Age Collision Course has are the scratch scenes. Now look, the scratch scenes have been really funny in the other installments. Even though in Continental Drift he was underused and he was really underused in Continental Drift. I still enjoyed those scenes. In Collision Course, he's actually way more underused here than he was in Continental Drift. It's overkill at this point. We've seen this gag so many times that's gotten to the point where it's now officially overkill. It's not funny because even the scratch scenes are not really brilliant. I chuckled maybe one time during the scratch scene and that's about it. Other than that, it was honestly just as terrible as the rest of the movie where Scrat was not around. And that's really sad because, you know, even the fourth film, which wasn't a good film, I at least still enjoyed Scrat in that one. And here I'm just all like, okay, just throw the towels. It's done. Just let it rest. Let the Scrat scenes rest. Just let the whole Ice Age franchise rest. Because Ice Age Collision Course, overall, in my opinion, is awful. This is truly the definition of an animated movie that was painful, that was dreadful, that was painfully boring as hell. Ice Age Collision Course is without a doubt one of the worst movies of 2016, and I'm going to give it one out of four stars. Just let it die. Let it die, Blue Skies. Just let this freaking franchise die. Please. <sighs> so you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Ice Age Collision Course and what's your favorite Ice Age movie in the other installments of the Ice Age franchise. And if I sound all over the place, it's because I don't know what in the shit I'm saying anymore. I'm being honest. And of course, you guys, thanks for watching. This is 22 Tiger Dude here. Don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.